City Council has finally approved the zoning map for urban development, and now it's time to race to put up the most profitable structures. There are definitely some shady permits and contractors, though, in the estates. Hey guys, and welcome to Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Will Meadows. And I'm Sarah Meadows, and today we're reviewing The Estates from Capstone Games and Simply Complex, and it's designed by Klaus Zock. It's a two to five player bidding, stacking, and take that in game. We have a review copy, so let's take a look at how it's played. To set up the game, pull out your perfectly organized meeple realty tray, or randomly draw 24 cubes from the bag and lay them out with the rest of the components. Lay out the six company certificates, give each player their 12 million starting dollars in loans, and then you're ready to begin. On their turn, each player will act as the auctioneer. If they choose to auction off a building block, they must choose one from the outside edges. Each player can only bid once or pass, and then the auctioneer has the choice of accepting the bid and taking the player's money. Or they can pay the bid themselves to the bidder, and then they get to place the cube out on the board. And the first time a color comes out, the highest bidder also gets that company's certificate. Buildings can only be added one row at a time, and they can only be stacked in descending order with the smaller valued blocks on top of the larger valued blocks. And buildings with slab foundations can only be one block high. Players can also select to bid on a rooftop. Once a roof is added, that building is complete, and at the end of the game, the player who owns the certificate for the highest colored block on the building will get to score it. Players are working to complete two full rows of buildings in order to trigger the end of the game. The finished rows will be scored positive, and the incomplete row will be scored negative. Players can also bid on building permits, which can reduce the amount of buildings necessary to complete a row, or they can extend it. And they can also auction off where the mayor will build his mansion. Whichever row the mayor ends up living in will have a double score at the end of the game, either positive or negative. When the second row of buildings has its final rooftop, the game ends immediately, and the player to have built the most valuable towers wins the game. Okay, wow. So this game is super meaty. I love the strategy that's involved in it. For a game that only involves, like, you know, bid, pick a piece from where it's gonna go, that's all you do on your turn. For those being the two main things you get to do, this game gives you a ton of choices. It's really interesting, especially as the game boils down to the end, but from the very first turn you take in the game, even just before you start, looking at your 24 option color blocks and determining, okay, these are the permits that I need to own to get the most points in the game, like right out of the gate, this game is a brain burner. Yeah, every single turn is important. You can't um, miss, mess up in the middle because uh, you will give an advantage to the other players. The ending turn is where it gets really crazy, though. You get down to those last couple turns, and it becomes very chess-like, where it's like, if I do this, then she's going to do that, and then I'll buy this, and then that'll end the game. Or if I do this, and she buys the permit and extends it by one, then that, I mean, it's just, it really is... Like, you can tell exactly what's, what you need to happen on those last couple turns of the game. And it's really, like, intense, and uh, the, the struggle is real. Yeah, so the storyline behind the game is a little shady, um, but it, it states that up front. Like, um, one extra thing you can do on your turn is you can set aside illegal money, uh, illegal, illegal, yeah. illegal <laughs> profits um, each turn that are worth victory points at the end of the game. Otherwise, the money you have in your hand is not worth anything. Right. It all comes down to which rows are going to score. Did I end up in the positive or the negative, And can I win the game? The game also scales really well. Two players is incredibly chess-like. Four players is also so. Like, it's really crazy how you get down to those final turns, and you can tell, like, I've got to get this row to score, otherwise I don't stand a chance. But it's anybody's game because anybody could bid on it. Anybody could put it where they want. Uh, really, really interesting stuff. Uh, the theme is interesting. The whole building thing, they've done it really well with the permits and the structures and the loans and where the mayor's mansion is going to be. The artwork is also really nice. I love the, uh, the illustration style. 
the watercolory effects and stuff. And then I also just really enjoy those big chunky blocks. They're illustrated on every side. They look great on the table. Really nice table presence on this one. Yeah, I thought it was very unique that they just used business cards as uh, the certificates for the different companies. They look like normally designed business cards, and I thought that was an interesting solution to that. Yeah, same with the checks. There's like a million, one million, I don't know how many there are, but a ton of $1 million checks, but each one is a unique business name, signatured. I just really appreciate the art. The bag is nice. The Meeple Realty tray that we have makes it super handy. Like you can just oh, wow, put yeah. it away and set it up and you're good to go for the next round. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of fun on this one. If you enjoy strategy games, if you enjoy you know, the four player count in those types of games, uh, I, this didn't really remind me of War Chest per se, but I think if you enjoyed something like AEG's War Chest, this would be another great addition. Or even a choir. Um, it has a little bit of that feel where you're um, controlling certain companies and those pieces. Um, and then it has obviously the building side with that. So um, it's not, it doesn't play like a choir, but it has a little bit of that feel to it. Yeah, very, very solid full game experience. If it sounds like something you would enjoy, check out The Estates and then be sure to subscribe to Tantrum House and we'll have new videos coming to you guys' way real soon. City Council has finally approved the developmental words. The zoning map for urban development. Council has finally approved the zoning map for stuff. That is hard to say. can also select to build on a rooftop. Once a, a roof. Bid. Oh, bid. Players can also select to build. <laughs> Meaty game. For having an, an action the turn, action, turn, or. But there are definitely some shady permits and one other thing in the estates. Give us your comments in the comments below so we can talk back to you and stuff.